Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to say hello to everybody. I hope you're all having a great day out there. And I'm going to be talking about something very important, and that is Christians taking a stand for their faith. Today, evil is waxing worse and worse. Things are becoming more and more dark. The darkness is getting incre increasingly bad. And what we need to do as believers is we need to go against the current. We need to stand up for righteousness. We need to walk the walk of faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And you know what? Standing up for our faith and taking a stand for Jesus is the prerequisite of our faith. So we need to do that. And it's very important for you and for me to follow God's plan. So without further ado, I'm going to be getting into 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I'm going to be reading verse number 3. And I believe that God has a word for you today. So I'm going to go right into the scriptures. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to smash that subscribe button below. And I know you know, we would appreciate that very much, and you can be a part of what we do. So hit that subscribe button, and you can put a comment below as well if you'd like, and I will respond. Anyway, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, in verse number 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So what does that scripture say? It says, we're in the flesh, we're walking in this, you know, Adamic nature, we're humans and we have this human nature that we have, but we can't war after the flesh. That means we can't fight evil with our own logic or human reasoning. We can't fight evil with our, you know, impulses. We need to fight evil with the spiritual weapons that God has given to us today. Today, I believe that things have gotten so much worse, so many egregious things that are going on in our country today. And we need to take a stand. We need to, to do that. And you say, I'm a Christian, and you know, what do I do? I just see all this evil going on. How do I take a stand? Well, one, follow the Bible. Obey it. Apply it. Two, pray for our country, pray for, the, for what's going on around us. Three, do not capitulate when, there's a, when someone's telling you to do something that violates the word of God. You need to take a stand and say, no, I won't do that. If someone tells you at your job, you know, lie, you know, say a lie so we can, you know, get this business transaction done. Do not capitulate, and that means surrender. Do not do that because... When we compromise, we've become deadened the more we compromise. The Bible says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. In the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 6, it says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So that means a little sin leads to more sin. So what we need to do is we need to fight in the spiritual realm. We need to get filled up with the Holy Spirit. That comes from the Bible. That comes from prayer. That comes from asking God to fill you and asking for his power because What's going on in our schools today is a, an abomination. What's going on in our culture is it's horrendous. You would have never thought that adult drag queens, these men dressed up as women, would go into classrooms teaching children, you know, about private parts and sex and gender identity. But I'm here to tell you that's perversion. It was perversion in the Bible when they did it back in the days of uh, Noah and, and, and Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot. And uh, it's definitely evil because the Bible says in the book of Genesis, right at the very beginning, God created them male and female. The identity was made by God. He created them male and female. Switching, this is all just part of a lie and it's all about perversion. And what we need to do is say, oh, that's not a big deal, you know. It's okay if men marry, women marry. We're okay with that. You know what? We love the sinner, but we hate the sin. We can love people who are doing that. You know, people who are homosexuals, we can love them, but you cannot approve and put a stamp of approval or just blow it off and say, that's ah, not a big deal, right? No, it goes against the Bible. It violates scripture. You know, it's it's been going on all along. Things keep perpetuating and getting worse. 
And you know what? Some people, they can even be, you know, churches are complicit with this stuff going on. They're actually allowing it in their churches. Some churches are saying, hey, you know what? We, um, we do marriages, same-sex marriages in this church. Are you kidding me? The Bible says that in the book of Leviticus. It says it's an abomination. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And even in the New Testament, he says they will not inherit the kingdom of God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So we need to stand on truth. Not just that area, but look what else is going on in our country right now. I mean, God is being pushed out of our schools. God is being pushed out of our communities. The church has got shut down during the pandemic. They left liquor stores and Planned Parenthood open, but they shut down the churches. Why? Because you know what? The Christianity is under assault and we've got to take a stand. So how do we do it? It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means fleshly. That means uh, our human natural ways. <laughs> It's not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Our weapons are mighty through God. So what we need to do, instead of being duplicitous to the uh, wicked deeds that are going on today, we need to take a stand, rise up. And you know, uh, you, can, uh, you can be a little frustrated. You can have righteous anger. You don't need to be apoplectic and lose your mind, but you can be, you know, have righteous anger and, and, and say, this is evil. Uh, you know what? What we need to do as pastors, speak out. What we need to do as Christians, we need to be obedient. I'm going to get to that. And what we need to do is we need to not accept the status quo and say, this is just okay. This is just the way it is. The Bible says that we need to stand up against these things. So what does it say in verse 5? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. All these evil thoughts, all these evil things, we need to cast it down because we need to be the light. You are salt and light. How do we take a stand? By being the light, by being salt, by being light. He says, you are the light of the world. You know, if the, and what does the scripture say? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine. And that's how we push back against this. What else do we need to do? Pray. And then what does it say? Verse number six. It says, having and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. This is 2 Corinthians 10 and verse six. When your obedience is filled, we need to revenge all disobedience. You know what? We need to come against sin. We need to speak out against evil. What's going on in the churches today? I mean, it's okay to preach on grace and love, the love of God. It's okay to preach on God's mercy. It's okay because he's a merciful, loving God who's full of grace and, and he's given us grace and he's washed us in his blood and we are blessed. We have the righteousness of God in Christ, but we need to speak out. And we need to take a stand and we need to say that this is wrong that that's going on in our communities and our society today. You know, it's, it's evil. People are turning their backs on God, left and right. I mean, abortions, these things are being approved everywhere. It's like people would rather vote for abortion than they would the economy because the world has gotten so evil today. There's so much deception going on. The government, this is so much evil going on in our government. And it's just amazing. You know, so many things going on. I mean, you just can't trust the government for anything. I mean, you look at all the things that are happening right now, and I mean, I got to be careful what I say because I'll be censored, but you know what? We know that the scamdemic is something that scammed us in so many ways. And people who, um, people who took these, um, these shots, you know what happened? I mean, they still caught COVID, and um, I just have to say that it didn't work out too well because... There's a lot of bad side effects, and you know that was never said, but now it's being found out. Just as so many things is evil going on today, we need to take a stand and say, no, we're not going to force people to tell us what to do. No, we're going to stand on the word of God first. We're going to do what's right. Praise God. We're going to obey our Lord in, in his word first. Amen? So what does it say? It says, having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So how do we go against disobedience? By being obedient. How do we go against disobedience? By taking a stand and saying, you know what? Here I am. Send me. If there's a law that infringes on my faith, I'm going to follow my faith first. And I'll get persecuted if necessary, but I'm not going to stop obeying God. Obedience to God is how you revenge what's going on in this world. God wants us to speak out. Be a light. Be a testimony. Share Jesus. Tell people about Jesus. 
And as a church, we need to you know, shed the light on the darkness that's going on today because there's just so much going on. But God will give us victory if we take a stand for Jesus when we're persecuted for righteousness sake. Great is your reward in heaven. God loves you. He has a plan for your life. He's just looking for you to not compromise your convictions. He's looking for you to stand up and say, you know what? This is evil. I'm going to stand for righteousness. I'm going to pray for these people and do it in love. And you know what? God will bless you. If this devotion encourage you today, I encourage you to... Uh, you know, put a comment below, let me know what you're thinking, and I want to encourage you to stand up for Jesus. Be that rock, because God has a purpose and a plan for, for your life, and he wants to give you his very best. God bless you.